we'll get underway. Modest uh, monetary spot. I work for Werribee Basketball, I'm a new player, coach, and manager. Uh, we also have a fair few Werribee people here, also a, a broad range. Um, it's really good to see because part of what we want to do out here is really grow basketball in the West. And uh, can't, can't thank Gory enough for coming down. He's come down uh, for free to just run this and help us grow basketball in the West. So, really appreciate him coming down. Uh, I'll talk about Gory for a little bit because I've known him for a little while, but uh, he won't talk himself up, so I'll talk him up a little bit. Um, he's one of the most humble blokes for me. He, uh, he'll do anything for you, and that's, that's shown um, with him coming down here to help us out down here. So, uh, he's a testament to the player, the player and coach pathway in Australia. He's done every level possible, started as a domestic coach in Townsville, worked his way into rep, worked his way from rep in the state program, from the state program into NITP, lucky enough to pick up the scholarship coach role with, uh, with our S. Then went back to Queensland, worked with the NITP in a full-time role as the high performance coach for Queensland North. Made his way back to the AS as an assistant coach, worked his way up to the head coach of the women's program, and now as the head coach of the University of Canberra Capital State. If there's anyone to pick up as a poster boy for the basketball show pathway for coaches, I think that would be glorious because he's certainly started from the bottom and is now uh, one of the most elite coaches in the country. We're really lucky to have him here today, so uh, let's welcome him. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Is that better? I'm not used to having these things on. So, um, firstly, welcome and thank you uh, for taking the time out of like your schedules. And I know it, it's very difficult in these situations where I'm lucky enough to be a full-time coach. That I know a lot of you are volunteer coaches that you give up your time and your time from your families to be able to coach and, and help youngsters play basketball. So, you know, without you know, the levels that you get to, we're all in it for the same reason, is to help players get better and help them on like, their basketball journey. And it's also about us learning as coaches like along the way. And no matter what level you're at, there's always something that you can learn, pick up from, and get better at. Um, and I guess that's part of, I guess before we get started with the girls on the court, is Reese briefly asked me to speak a little bit about coaching and about, you know, whether it's club, rep, domestic, uh, state level, whatever it may be, you've got to have your own philosophy and how you want to plan and have your teams play. And I guess when I speak to coaches and, and my thoughts on it a little bit is, how do you want your team to play? So when you first bring your group together, is what's, going to, what's the strength of your group and how do you want to coach a team? You know, do you want it to be a running team? Do you want it to be a half-court set team? How do you best coach or how are you going to best help your team be successful and get the most out of them? So that's the number one thing is what do you want to be as a coach and what do you want to stress as far as how do you want to prepare your teams? The second part is then, do you want to be a structured set coach and have sets like whether it's a shuffle or a flex offense or do you want to have concepts where your players can just play into those concepts and play a motion style offense. And regardless of, there, there's no right or wrong answer to any of those two. You can play both systems, you can play a concept motion offense and you can still have set structured offense. But it's just what do you feel more comfortable in doing and then it comes down to what suits your players. You know, if you're better to a system style offense, then you've got to spend time in going through that set of those plays and what, how you need to go about getting those individual skills into that team environment. If you want to be more of a motion or concept based coach and teach those things, that's going to then take time as well. So there's no right or wrong in how you want to play the game, but you've got to be prepared to put in the time and understand what the strengths and weaknesses are of either your group or, or that system and style. Uh, the next thing that I think that we forget about is, you know, everybody, you know, wants to get into what's the new beauty, like offense of the moment. So what, what's the new bad thing? And then everybody around the country then wants to run the same offense. And I find that like really boring when you go to a national championships and every team's running like the same offense. And no one's really running it well. They're just running it because someone said, oh, this is a really good offense to run. And then as a coach, you've got to understand why am I running it? Do I have the background knowledge and information about how to run it successfully and, and the skills 
to be able to give your players to run it successfully. And then on the back of that is when you have your system or your style, break it down into what are the drills or what are the skills required that we need to teach and have a practice when you do get to practice to make that system successful. So for, for kids and for juniors, if they can't lead and catch the ball and square up and pivot, you're not going to be able to make a forward entry pass into your offense. So your offense is screwed right from the very start. If you don't teach basic fundamentals, your offense, you can't get into it. So if you can't pass, catch, pivot, if you can't make layups on zero or contested, you know, your offense isn't going to be worth very much unless you can do that. And I said too, um, I worked at the AAS and I worked at the Center of Excellence and I used to say to the, the incoming kids coming in is, our practices aren't sexy. If you think that you're gonna come in and you're gonna like learn something like you and it's gonna be great and wonderful, it's not about that. Because we need to get fundamentals right for you to be able to play the game. So unless you have good fundamentals, you can't actually play in any system or any style. And, and it's the same thing with, you know, this is my first year in coaching in the WNBL. And you know it's the same thing. Our our practices are not sexy at all. You think about coaching elite athletes, and you know we've got an Olympian on our team with Mariana Tolo. We do layups every day. We do passing, catching, ball handling every day. We do shell drill every day at practice because it's something that we can get better at, and it's something that that I think our players need. And regardless of whether they're 12, 15, or 30. You need to get better and you can't assume that players just know. You've got to be able to teach them. That's why us as coaches, it's important that we know and understand it. It's our job to teach and correct, correct and help our players rather than just assume that they know everything. Because usually they don't. They think that they do. Yep. They'll think that they know more than me. Yeah. But they won't. That's what I tell my girls all the time. Um, and then it's like, what you actually do, and, and you know, I know time is short with your practice sessions, I guess, some people here who practices with their teams once a week. Yeah, who practices twice a week. Yeah, so mostly it's twice a week, so it's how much you can fit into those sessions and how you plan those sessions is important too. You know, we all get caught and we, are, we do lead very busy lives with work and family, but it's how much time you put into preparing practice, I think, is more important sometimes than the actual game. Because if you prepare practice and have it planned and organized, that leads into success in games. So you need to take time in preparing that. And, you know, literally, with most of my groups, both with at the AIS and the Center of Excellence and with the Capitals, is our plan of practice is always like the warm up and the ball handling, the layups and the skill work. Then there's a component of shell drill and defensive work. Then we get into our offensive breakdowns and systems and style of play. And then we scrimmage. And it's pretty much that's kind of like the stock standard practice plan. And you can change drills and things in between all of that. But I think it's easier if you actually have your practice plan. All right, what do we need to do every single practice that's a non-negotiable? And that's what I have, was like we have with the Gems, with the under-19 girls team, with the Capitals, we have, um, and they're pretty much similar because they coach both teams, but we have five pillars of offense and five pillars of defense. And each one of like the practice sessions has to cover off some of those pillars of our program. You know, yeah, as a coach, you know, everyone wants to say, yep, yeah, we like to be a running team. And everyone like says that, but then I say, well, how much time do you devote practice to full court transition drills so that your players are used to running the floor, kicking the ball ahead, running hard in their lanes? So it's easy enough to roll out the, I want to be a transition team, I want to be able to push the ball, but how much time and effort do you put into that at practice by giving your players that that's how you're going to play? Um, and I guess the other thing is, what standards and values that you have as a coach that you want to impart on your team? Is it, that's why I said there's some non-negotiables that, that we have um, as part of our program that you know we just won't accept. 
you know, whether it's like missed blockouts, whether it's missed laps, whatever it may be, that's up to you to decide. But there's got to be some things that, you know, there's some things that I'll go, I'll let that go. You know, it, it annoys me, I don't agree with it, but it's just basketball and players aren't perfect. But there's some non-negotiables that, you know, at practice at games that, no, you'll be taken out of the court, you'll be subbed out, you'll be in trouble at practice if you don't tick off one of those non-negotiable things. And, and that's up to you to decide with your level of group and how you are as a coach, what are, what are some things that you just won't let slide? Because we can overcoach and we can overdo things and you know we're trying to teach players you know to have a go and to make sure that they at least want to be there and want to have fun but there's got to be some non-negotiables about how you go about that um, and you know if you think that uh, two practices a week uh, I think is, is a good starting point that, that's where, where you should be at to be able to you know prepare your teams for practice um, when we go to world championships my last one with uh, under 19 women, uh, there were days where every team was allotted 45 minutes to practice. That's all you had, so you, you had a game every day, but in the morning before you played that afternoon or that evening, you had 45 minutes. So 45 minutes to prepare to play in Spain, USA, or an international game at the World Championships, and you had to tie in as much as you put into that 45 minutes. And, and you think right now is like, that's not enough time, but if you're time efficient and you plan it well enough, is I think you can still get a lot out of your sessions. Um, and, and the same thing with that, our plan was, there was always an element out of the 45 minutes of, we had to warm up, do ball handling, do shooting. We did, and you know, it might have only been for five minutes, but we did shell drill every day at World Championships of practice because I felt that it was important to jump to the ball, have ball pressure and get their mindset defensively orientated. Uh, and then there was a part of you know running through our offense, running through our defensive system, and then you had to spend time in scouting the opposition team that you're about to play and go through the scout. And 45 minutes goes very quickly, but if you're organized and planned, I, I think you know if you can get a 45 minute practice done, if you've got an hour, an hour and a half, you can get a lot done in that time if you're planned and organized. But it's just about going back to plan practices and be organized and have those values or those standards about how you want your team to play and what are your non-negotiables, what are your standards offensively and defensively and formulate your practice sessions around that. Um, and that's where that is. Um, any questions on any of that before we get started? Now, we'll have time for, and if you've got questions as we're going through, just raise your hand. Um, I'll try and do as best as I can, coach the girls, but also talk to the coaches. But if you've, yeah, if you've got any questions as we go, hands up. So the first, you've got in your notes, the first bit is all about individual defense, building up to, to four and four and team defense. Then there'll be a bit of a break, and then we'll go into building up into um, offense. So a little bit of this is taken from uh, the gems, a little bit of is from the capitals, and just like over my time. And that's the thing is to start in coming in is like we do some of these drills. That's what I said. It's like not sexy. We do this with our with our capitals girls. Like they may be like WNBL players, but their, their skill level needs to be better. Their footwork needs to be better, and when we're helping to try and get them to be better players. Okay. So now we are to say also, put all the same two lines in the baseline. Okay. So just get a line, a plain line here, a line, a plain line here. Just two lines. Now you're going to walk up to the block. Once you hit the block, get outside, put some plain outside foot, toe pointed to the cone and then you kind of close out with two hands up and that's it. All right, so the important thing is walk up, hit, land, take off as I rise, short steps, two hands up, stick your stance, and then walk to the back of the line. That's it. All right, so you're ready to go. So plan outside foot, hit, go, two hands up, good. Go, go. Hands up so you keep the bed behind the toes. Carry hands up. Hands up, short, sharp. Good, hold that. So now, as you come out, as you get to that cone, as you go hands up, head comes back, 
deep stance, backside up and down. So you've got one head over, and you're going to be off balance. So as I throw my hands up, my head goes back, and I bend my knees. Ready? Here we go. So quick, hands up. Now you're going to pull the ball. And, 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 throw it down. Put hands up. Push on, so we're trying to get distance. 
I'll then go back, go back again. I want you to see if you can get there in two or three slides. So this is the thing. You need to be able to self-generate your level of intensity. All right, so this probably won't do it again. You have to catch the ball and go. Whereas this will make you a better defender and make it tough to guard. Okay, so ready down in stance. Go, push, push, go and see the ball go. Slide, slide, high level. Go, slide, slide, slide back to the inside shoulder. Good, let's clean up. Slide, slide back, high low. Good, let's take up. Slide, push, good. Sit, let's take, push. Good, so now, last one we're going to do on the denial. Same thing, so think about where your weight is and where you're going to get power from. So your power is coming from your back foot, so you can cover more distance. So now I'm going to slide out. Once I get my top foot there, head and hands out, so I'm bending the changes, and I'm sliding back. Same thing, reverse pivot, and we're at high low again. Alright? Girls, as quick as you can, as intense as you can. Ready? Go, 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 quick. Slide back. Good, good. Open up. Good, next step. Quick as you can. Slide. Chin snap. Good. Spring spot. Good. Slide, slide back. Good, wait for that. That was the test. Now at the same time, you're up. Next thing you go. Ready? Go. Slide. Go back, go back, go back. Go, 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 Nice. Good. Next step. Last step. Here we go. Last step. Good. All right. Now we get to play with the basketball. So, coach is building up like footwork, hand pressure, and then what the biomechanics are of the footwork to get them there. You know, we. You can add into this, and we haven't like got time tonight to go through unless you all want to be here till 10 o'clock, we can make it go that long. But you can add in then playing one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, if we do individual work with our girls, we'll do some footwork or a bit of practice, then we'll throw in a basketball off the forward lead, we'll throw in a basketball off a closeout and let them play that one-on-one, -on -one. okay? So that would be the build-up for our group, would be to do that all on zero and then bring in an offensive player and play that one-on-one. -on -one. When we do that and we play that one-on-one -on -one in a game, we limit the amount of dribbles that the offense has, like why, to help the defense get some success in it. So when we play with the girls, it's like on a forward lead or on a closeout, you've got two dribbles to go score. The offense hates it, but it makes them better at using effective dribbles offensively, but it helps the defense, and all they gotta do is stay down for two slides or two dribbles and defend two dribbles on the move. Okay. Um, thank you. Alright, so give me two blue and three gold. Well, quickly. So it's all. Oh, blue's got it. It's taking control. Alright, so now building up in the team defense. So, um, two different, I guess there's a lot of talk at the moment about pack defense. So it's playing open stance, not really playing pressure and playing in the lanes. Um, it's more so having pressure on the ball, but you're open stance off the ball and you're allowing ball reverse passes. Uh, so there's that, and then I term you're either in pack or you're in pressure defense where there's immense pressure on the ball, you're not allowing like forward uh, guard wing passes. So there's two different types of like how you want to play, whether you want to be a pack defensive kind of thing where you can like sit back in a kind of zone kind of style where you're just packing it in, daring them to shoot from the perimeter, or you want to be that pressure team where you're forcing passing lanes, you're forcing decision making on the perimeter. So for now, we're just going to be in pack. So out of the pack means hand pressure on the ball, so you're close enough to get a hand on the ball, so your hand needs to be over the top of the ball. If you're too far back that you haven't got a hand on the ball, there's not enough pressure on it. So you need to be touch distance on the ball. If I can, as a ball defender, I want to make sure that my thing is, is I've got a hand that's trying to push the ball and get them to move it to their hip. 
why it takes them out of their shot, it takes them out of their ready to drive and ready to pass the ball. So I want to influence as a defender where the offensive player has the ball. So if I just sit here like this, this is great, but she can pass it there, she can shoot it over the top of me and she can drive. Whereas initially if I just go right, put the ball there, she's not a threat right now. She can't shoot it, she can't pass it. So I want to dictate defensively where the offense has the ball. If I play here and I play off, she can do what she likes. So we need to be assertive and aggressive by getting that hand pressure. And I keep it there without getting my head over my toes, but I'm making her go on a back foot. So every time someone catches the ball, that's what we want. We want backside the basket, we want to influence their hand pressure. Now, the thing about this, and it's getting a bit technical, but the more that you can have a bend in your arm, the better it is. Why? Because you tend to go straight arm and automatically your head goes over. If you have a bent arm, your head sinks back, I go straight arm, my head goes forward. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no. Are you, are you giving a specific arm that you want? I know that you've got the right arm on the close out. You're saying, have you got it? Individual scout plays a big part in it where you want to send them left or send them right. Um, and especially like in the middle of the floor, I think that's the hardest part to guard one on one. Usually it will be you want to influence whoever that is onto their weak hand. So whether that's right or left, that's up to you to decide who you're playing against. Yep. And so, and that's the thing if you want to So if I want to influence her to go left, I'm playing with my left hand in. Yep. That way now I'm forcing her directly to take the ball. So if I play it here, she can go either way. As soon as I go there, she's got to bring it back. Or if she brings it across, she's right where I want it anyway. And now I can position my feet to send it to the left side of the floor. If I went that way to try and go, it's going to be now she tries to swing across and I'm done. Alright, so if I want them to go left, I'm going like left hand in. Left hand there, but then if they sweep it across, I'm right there where I want it to happen anyway. But it comes down to, I guess, yeah, back to your questions, an individual scout. And if you're playing against, you know, to start this, it's kind of like a little bit is like, don't get beaten. So whether it's either way, don't get beaten. Because often on a Friday night, you don't know when it was a right hand or left hand. So you play again, yeah, and, and my thing on that is just play it straight up. So what hand in you go with either? Either. Okay. Either. It, it, and especially when you're dealing with like younger kids, they're not going to be thinking, do I need to force right, left, whichever way. It's just to buy in of where are my feet, have I got ball pressure. That's the only two things you need to worry about right now. I, I think if you're coaching under 12s, under 14s, have they got appropriate footwork, have they got a hand on the ball, and then just send them either way and don't get beaten. Because we're squeeing your feet at the top of the ball? Yeah, so our kicking rule is backside to the basket on everything. So squeeing your foot, you know what Yes. Yep. Yeah. Unless, unless, unless you were then sending it left or right. Then you would. Then you would. Jab. Yes. Straddle the jab. Straddle the jab. Foot, yeah. So if you were playing straight up and you said, I don't know which way she's going to go, left or right, I don't know whether she's a left or right hander, play it straight up, feet are straight, backside to the basket. If they jab, then I'm straddling their jab foot. Yeah. <coughs> Three-point shooter with ours, you've got to have heels above the three-point line. Yep. So if it's someone that can shoot a three-point shot, like our, our heels are going to be above the three-point line right there because they can still shoot that. So if they jab, you jump back. They're within shooting distance. If it's a non-shooter and you're playing more so a driver, it's toes behind the three-point line. It just depends on who you're playing. Um, so now all to the top. Every time. You guard the ball, it's backside to the basket and there's hand pressure on that, whichever way you want to send that. Now, the two ones here, your backside is over the corner of the elbow. So your butt crack is pointed to the basket and your wide open stance and you're taking up space. So low and wide, take up as much space as you can. Okay, so hands up, arms up, ready. So when the ball goes to there, you're sprinting, and now the same thing in here is you want to force and the same thing. Some coaches force middle, some coaches want to force baseline. Whatever your philosophy is and how you want to send it, mostly in the pack, it's about forcing back to the middle, because that's where help is. 
it's the shortest way there is shorter rather than having somebody there on the baseline. Okay, if you're in pressure defense, well, you go on the baseline, you go in the middle. But in pack, you want to see the back to the middle before the help right there. So your thing is, is hand pressure on the catch, yep. back side to the basket, you're on the elbow, both seats, wider, 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 wider. And you're probably playing one step below, right here. So you need to be on her low shoulder. So where if she does drive baseline and now it's three on three, it's not five on five, she's got help, but you've got vision on where she is. If you play on her high shoulder and she back cuts and you look at the ball, she's got a layup. So you always want to be low shoulder on that. So we've got hand pressure on that. So we go shoot the ball, sprint back to spot, there. Ball goes, sprint to spot there. Then the crowd, ball goes, there, now hold there. So in every catch, you're going to call ball. You're calling help left and help right, whichever way it is. And then when the ball goes there, you're calling ball. Help you're left. Help left. Go. Help middle. Yep, help middle, whatever it may be. So go. So I want three ball shoots. Oh, hold left. So hold it. Oh, on every catch, hold on every catch, blue team. You want to want to play off a shot fake or play off a pivot before you make the pass. The ball starts there. Ready? Here you go. Big hand oh, pressure, sprint. Hand pressure, hand pressure, hand pressure on the ball, good, hand pressure. Good, hold that. So there's some things to teach you. Off the ball, so we've got the on ball, but there's ball pressure backside to the basket. As soon as the ball goes to that side of the floor, when you initiate your initial stance and you're at the right spot, you need to check where the ball is, but also check back where your player is. We get two court being shoot watching the ball, and someone face cuts us or back cuts us or lobs the ball. So at every time you get to your position, you get there, you announce what position you're at, and you also check back to where the ball's come from. All right, so one more ball reversal, and change over. Hand pressure, hand pressure. Hand pressure. So goals, you're on offense, blues, you're on defense. Can you explain from the Yes. Um, go, go. You're right. Um, when Being this way compared to any 
Now this is getting like upper level compared to being like shoulder and being skinny here versus changing my stance to that way I'm taking up more space. So I tend to go rather than just be in line with shoulder, turn your chest to be a little bit more flat to the ball. That way you're taking up more space than what you are like this way. And just by changing that foot up a step, I'm more ready to get into a passing lane if it goes there. Okay, rather than being like back a little bit flatter. So make sure you're up that and you can still have your chest pointed to the ball rather than being flat and just your shoulder pointed to the ball. So now the ball goes here. You're a close target. One low. Who's a close target? Yep. So now we're going to allow the ball in. So now as the ball goes in and your position, reverse pivot, backside to the baseline. So I've got you. So the ball's there. I'm on this, ball goes, reverse pivot, and then I'm just playing in between minor player and post player. Okay, we're in pack defense, we're just packing in. So you're playing this elbow, so same thing here. Reverse pivot, I can still see mine, I can still see yours. So all it is is you're reverse pivoting baseline, I'm reverse pivoting towards the basket, you're still staying. So you don't want to overhelp where they just skip that back here, so you need to be in between where I can dig and I can help, okay? So start the ball there, so the scenario is going to be go there, go there, go back, go to here, and then throw it into the post and then deep. Alright, ready? Let's talk blue here. Ball, 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 Good, deep, deep, good, up, 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 I've got it, as soon as it leaves her fingertips, I'm going to get in there. Alright, because if she puts it on the bounce to try and make a point to move to the other basket, I might be able to dig at that and go. So you've got to move on fly time and tell you more time to move. Do you can ball pressure, spring, check behind. Good dig, dig, good, skip it out. There you go, there you go. So it's going to be a blue, blue in the post. One blue in the post. Too slow. Alright, because we want to stop 
her driving wheel, so her, her deal is she wants to try and force her into the pack deep into the wheel. If you're too slow and backpedaling here as she drives, that's your help. So as soon as the flight time of the ball goes, I just sprint back into here and be quick. Alright, I'll turn to get there. Start there, get it to there and more of those. Ready? Now, some key things are uh, bring the ball back to here. Uh, have this battle like with whatever age group it is, and especially when there's post players in there. People bring their ball above their heads to feed the post. So as soon as the ball is above their head, we have two hands up into a closeout. Okay? If you're reading that off the ball, you're thinking that there's either going to be a skip pass or a pass to the post so we can play back off to our player, especially on that weak side. So anytime the ball gets lifted above their head, we're jamming up and taking away space and we're playing for the skip pass or we're playing it for the pass to the post. If she brings it down into a driving stance, then we've got to go backside to the basket and play the drive. Okay? So now, anytime on the pruder, if they lift it above their head, climb in and go back close to the off players. Alright, so offense. Do you know just move it, or you can bring it above your head, or just catch it and then move on? Ready? Here we go. Then you need to sprint and find the open player. Okay, so anytime now, 
If you can reverse the ball, you can play it out the corner. Anytime you two get it, you can drive through the through the seams. Okay? If you've got a drive lane. Low help, which is going to be one of you two, at all times you've got to call stay or go. So stay means stay with your own, go means we're in rotation. Ready? Here we go. Great defense, goal. Great defense. You get the rest of the night off. Blue, you think I was coming down for a reason? Shooters. Game for the offensive score. You are on ball. Blue, you're on the Five. 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 Five.
rebound they get it back well you're back to zero that doesn't count you know if you're in two stops in a row you've got to be perfect on it every time and that leads into the mentality in the game where you can ask your players about you know you can stat how many stops in a row you've got in a game you know is it three the most you've ever got in the game is it five whatever and it's something like we stat um, and restated with the caps of like how many stops in a row can we get defensively because that builds up you know we had at times we charted you know whether it was for a quarter or whether we had you know, at times it was we needed three stops in a row every quarter and that was kind of like one of our goals that we needed and then you know it just buys into defensively it gets your players up if they know coming into a timeout you've had five stops in a row and the opposition team's called the timeout because they haven't been able to score it's built momentum in about let's try and get the sixth stop the seventh stop the eighth stop and it buys into them creating more pressure in your defense and more buy into how you're playing and what you're doing to practice as well. Um, any questions with any of that? Just jump to the ball and don't allow face cuts. Yep. So just general principles of like no face cuts. So as soon as, and you shouldn't get face cut in a pack stance because literally you're playing that far off to the ball. So if they come towards you, you should just check them and it's that close out footwork or the denial footwork whether you go head hand snap or you just play behind. So you should be in a good enough position on a pass and cut that you should never get beaten in pack. You're more susceptible if you're playing pressure defense to back cuts than what you are if you're playing in pack. Um, I was going to go through D trans, but we've run out of time. But I can show you if that's something that you think would be worthwhile. Yes, I'll just show you quickly what we do. Um, there's a five blue, five gold now. So let's get the uh, first view ball in now. First on the ball. There, let's get a person right back to the basket. Two people on the sideline and a guard in the back ball. So one person like right back. So we're playing like a playing full ball. Two people on the half ball. And a guard here. So hold up to the side. Here we go. Okay, let's go right back. We have here blue. Here. So we have one guard here. There's someone right back to the basket. One wing and one wing. So perfect world. So this is like on a main basket. This is our, you know, uh, a lot of teams run this D trans wise. We always want somebody on the ball. So putting pressure on the inbounds passing all right up, all over that. Make the referees blow their whistle and tell you to get behind them. But there's got to be immense pressure on this. Most teams play with one guard in the backcourt. My job defending the point guard is to make them catch as close to the corner as possible. So I'm not letting them catch it like on the run through and on the sweep where they can catch it and go. I'm like stuck on, I'm playing your spot, I'm stuck on her bar um, and her people driving the right down there to try and get her to get a deep catch. 
where she can't catch on the run and Steve was possible to go through by in a second. So now, now we've also got our four, our five backers like our safety protecting the basket. So as the ball comes in to here, so throw it, yep. Our job now is to sprint and get behind the line of the ball. So now, if it comes to the middle, we're plugging, we're packing that gap. So if she sees it, oh, I can drive middle, there's already help there. So it's like Pat, we're playing in behind the ball. Down the line, one on two ways. Same thing, you can be in denial stance down here, or you can just be in flat open stance, inviting that pass over the top, where if it comes, I can go steal and go. So your thing is being two thirds, one third, just playing like open stance. But you're still seeing where she is because if she goes back, you need to go back further. For your person at the side of the floor, you're right in the middle. So you can still cover that as long as you close out. You're still just protecting the basket. Okay, the ball changes sides. The ball comes back, the ball goes to the inbounder. Now you shoot position, your open stance. You're covering to the middle, but checking where she is. You're plugging and packing in behind. They've got two ball carriers. Okay? Now, the ball up, so you dribble it down. And you've got to kick the head. The first thing, hold up. The first thing that we need to do is to get everybody behind the line of the ball. This is the part that, you know, juniors struggle with, and some of our girls at times do. They think that D Trans is still playing with your player. It's about playing the ball. Right now, the ball is in the store, so if she wants to walk back and detrans offensively, we're going to run back to get behind the line of the ball. If they want to walk back, that's fine, but we're going to get, keep coming back, we're going to get back here, and then as she starts to come, we can pick her up. But the other thing is team defense, everyone's going to play the ball. So no matter whether they're standing in the back court, we can help you with the ball right there. And that's where we play that. Okay, so go back to the inbound seat. Um, and this is what, and this is the perfect world of the main basket um, with both the, the gems um, and with uh, the caps girls. We run fist. Um, Reese, this isn't going overseas anywhere. Four worlds. No. We run. We run fist. Is our normal full court man to man defense. So fist is, we'll have pressure on this, we'll have pressure on the inbound, and we're playing two thirds, one third up the floor. So fist is our normal full court defensive trains, man to man rules. When we go double fist, now we're allowing this player to make a read, whether they go and face guard and double team the point guard, usually teams only have one point guard, everyone else just like runs. So this player at the double fist can come straight here and face guard and double team the point guard. Or on this catch, this is the reason why we want it to catch deep on the inbounds, she can start to come like she's coming to plug and then come back and we trap this pass. And then everyone else is an interceptor. So that's our double fist. And now usually that's a, that's a four or a five inbounding. Some teams would, they'll run two guards on the inbound, but it's usually a four and a five now. We're trying to trap and take it out the point guard's hands against the group. Point guard, you're playing up the lane, you're playing up the lane. You're not trying to like come and steal us. Because our thing is, if that's their four or their five man, bring the ball up the floor, that's a win for us. You know, I know for us at the Capitals, the teams did it to us. If that's our four or our five, bring up the floor, the coach has a heart attack. Less hair, great hair, that's why I like I am. And it, and, it, and it ruins, not, not ruins, but it makes you adjust if you've got, you haven't got your point guard getting you into your offense. If you've got your, your four man or five man bringing up the ball, it changes your floor positions and how you get into the offense. So then it creates another thing of what do you do when your four man brings up the ball. Yes, so our rule was, it went there, we're not going, we're not running at her, we're making her bring it up for as long as possible. Okay, so when it went there, the same thing is deny the ball back. Your job is when it went back there, everyone else could hedge and recover just to slow it down, to see if she might like stop to see if she could make that pass. But your job is to run and get right in front of it, not to try and go and like steal it, 
but just to get in front of it, just so she's got pressure in front of you. We don't want to run directly at her, we just want to run it back in, so we deny that, and then as the four or the fives bring it up, we start to close down passing lanes. We don't allow her any kick ahead passes. So we deny the one man back, as she's bringing it up, we just back to her. We're not trying to like come at her and trying to steal it. We're trying to make the four or the five enter them into their offense. Okay, then if the one man, they stop here, something will stop here, and the one will come back and get it, that's fine. They've chewed up enough time on the clock. All right, if they're gonna come and get the ball here and start their offense, that's fine. Okay, so that's how we get into fist or the double fist. Um, so just go back again. So our, our rules are our three, four, and five are always rebounding. Um, and depending on personnel too and who shoots the ball. Like there's a lot of discussion in around D train. So if you're always saying, say, um, for us, um, Carly Wilson would, would never go into rebounds, so it's like you're always back in safety protecting the basket because we're not expecting you to run in a rebound. The problem being though, when Carly Wilson is a good shooter and shoots this, we can't expect her then to shoot this and be the first one back there on the miss. So then you've got to have interchangeable roles between your guards especially. And they don't match up with the play, they match up with the role. And that, that's the thing about D-trans, it's hard for players to get into. You're not running to your own player, you're running to your position on the floor. So you have your three, four and five on the rebound, it might be a two man back, and your one man's got to be roving, ready to find the point guard or wherever the point guard is try and get that ball, okay? And we were um, really lucky, because course, Reese had done a great job in like Launceston with her, but Kayla Roof was really good for us in this spot, in being able to, we went double fist, she was really good at tracking the first pass, and going and face guarding, and it really screws with teams' momentum, especially when they're trying to get the ball inbound quickly. And she was really aggressive and assertive, being on the ball and then getting back. And I think it's a little bit of like, Players can have, I guess, their own license to make that decision. Do I go on the ball? Do I go straight to the point guard and play it? How do I want to play that? Um, so it gives a, you know, when you get trust within your system, it's really good that the girls or the boys can just play it to how they want to play it. When you call a double fist, there's no right wrong. She doesn't have to be on the ball. She can be double teaming the point guard straight away. And the same thing would be if, if they see all of this pressure and a guard comes screaming out of the backcourt, it's the same deal. If she come down here, I'm not just allowing her to run past me to get this catch. I'm like denying this because we're all in pressure. We're not allowing early, early inbounds passes to go over our head. Or she's doing a great job denying her. She's doing a great job with the ball and someone screams out of the backcourt to, to get a pass. So that's how we said. So fist is our normal, just man-to-man -man match up. Double fist is we trap the inbound, we face guard it and play it that way. On the track, run the ball. Run back and get behind the ball. And that's what they struggle with. They buddy run. They call it buddy run, they'll run beside their own player. It's like, well, get ahead of the ball because the ball's the thing that's going to score. If your player wants to jog down the court, you can at least get behind the level of the ball and present a crowd and have more of us defending the ball. Yeah. All right, back to the any questions on any of that before we go into anything else with the D? No? Yep. If you have a guard that can pick up, not just a guard that you can that's actually going to You worry about lifting everybody else to the same point as that. You the guard that's going to be able to bring up. Good question. It depends on personnel. Um, but we had it with our last under 19 group, we had Chris Wallace, who was like just super quick, buzz saw, and she plays that kind of game, so it allowed her to get up and have like that full on pressure. That we still played, everyone still had their role of the ball, but we knew she was just gonna get up and people in the backcourt and people play that. So it depends on it, and it may not be a point, but maybe a two man that's a better ball defender that you bring up doesn't necessarily always have to be the one man. Um, with us, with the capital, we changed it like Lauren Mansfield, we couldn't, you know, she had to play 40 minutes for us, we couldn't afford her to be in that kind of defense the whole game, so it was done by committing with them, having we were up to do it, and sending other people up, or we just get a pal at times, just double-team point guards, so Lauren wouldn't have to make that heavy run. Um, but 
but it just depends on personnel too. Like if you didn't have a good car that could get full court pickup, I don't know whether you'd play that way either. You know, that's that's the thing, but you've got to have <laughs> pressure on the ball and on your pickup point and find that early. You don't want to, you don't want any cars, any good cars, good, is uh They'll start to hide and the line initials like the brake line where she'll just like catch it on the run and attack you because she knows by catching it here she's getting into trouble against the trap or she knows the trap's going to be coming. So the good guards as you start to get up there will just like catch it and sweep and negate any kind of like pressure that you have. But it's, you know, it's about getting a set up your system and actually practicing a day. And to be honest with you, it's weird in that when you talk about structuring practice, uh, we do D-trans a lot and a lot and a lot and it still is a work for us, it's a work in progress and we spent the whole like season doing it. Um, there's a great drill that we do, um, but it's, it's a little bit too hard to put in right now, but um, to explain it to you, so if he's just doing it off the main basket or doing it off the free throw, if you're going to put in D-trans. The other way that I teach it is we have two teams on, on halfway, so we'll have like a blue group. Actually, that's what we said. Get blue on one half, goals on the other half. There's five. Five on each side of where you need ten. So, this was a way, and in a way, it's kind of like, I'm not that smart, um, but I came up with this as a good way of teaching defensive transitions. So, um, don't you? so you can manipulate this, and you can make it your own in any way. You can manipulate uh, whether it's ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives, and how they come into the drill. Um, for me, to start with, I'll manipulate it, and then as you talk about, people have got their own. I guess roll in it will say, alright, you're the one man, you're the two, you're the three, you're the four, you're the five. So how we started is one on one. <coughs> oh, yeah. So gold's going to that basket. So blue's got the penny, so we started it. So now we play one on one. Okay, we play one on one. Now on a score it's regular game rules. If you score, blue have to win down the ball, it's a normal game. Whereas if you get a stop or a steal, you're going to the other end. So we're walking in, say you score. So we go through, you score a lane. So now it becomes, right now, it's about D-trend. So now your role is, regardless of your position, blue's got to come in to get it. So now it's two against one. So we've gone from one on one to the hole right there. So once you score, what's going to be the threat for you? Her. So you've got to run and either find her, or what's your other choice? You either got to pick up the ball, or what else are you got to protect? Does she score? No. So the basket. So you've got a choice to make. Am I going to find the, the receiver, or am I just going to sprint back and protect the basket? So you have choices to do. So now it comes down to come back. It's two against one. So just go down. So you throw it over the top. There, all right, man. And so same thing, for the score, yellow has to inbound it. Or for miss, you gotta come in and say it's the score, same thing, all right there, you gotta inbound it. So now what would be you'd be saying, hold up, now what is it? Is it it's two on two, isn't it? So now you can have one person on the ball, you can have pressure on the inbound there, right there. So now say we inbound it. Oh right there, what was your rule? What was their rules on the point guard? Where are they gonna catch you? Yep, so obviously you gotta run and find her and then try and corral her and force her on a deep catch. Now what's your job once they've been down there? Behind the line of the ball. Yep, behind the line of the ball. So now they're playing two on two. Now that is. Alright, hold up. Now, it's off this basket. So say you missed it right now. So now another blue comes in. So now we are what? Three on two. So hold right there. So there was a, a, a missed basket or a turnover. Gold, what's your immediate thought? What are we going to have? Safety. And what else are we going to have? What's the team that scores? The ball. So we've got to have ball pressure. 
about safety. So in that situation where you came in here and like you know, used to lay out and she gets it, get on the this straight away. You're going to be falling back safe, you're going back to the basket, don't worry about those two, your job is to protect that. You're going to have pressure on that, so now we're going that way, three against two. Yep, that's a sprint back, now come to the car ball. Now goal, you're ready to come in. We go, 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 goal. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, what have we got right now? Round three. What did you do? Your choice is get back or go for more. So either is wrong. Either is wrong. Okay, but you're the choice. Is you want to stay up there or you're protecting the basket. There's only one or two choices. You're ball or your safety. And if you're safety, you're just going to get back there and plug it up. If the ball comes in, then you're going to plug it and pack it off. If the ball went there, you want to have better that. You can shut it up and play if you don't play. Three on three, good, in down, go, blues in, so we're now four on three, we're going to track safety. And now match up, find someone in the car, we're in rotation. Yellow is ready to come in, it's all made. Good. Get it, go, 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 go. I need you there. Good, go, go, go. I'm going to. Go, 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 go. go, go, go. So what you do is just building up from one on one to two on one to two on two, to three on two to three on three, and you continually build it up. Now you can either do it one or two ways where you give each girl this is your role, your D trans or your ball pick up, and that's what you're doing, or you just play it live and they've got to solve problems on the run. Because the other thing is sometimes is we as coaches we overcoach and give too much information or the players want the exact answer and sometimes you just got to solve things on the run. You know, and when the shit is a fan, the shit is a fan, you've got to solve the way by talking and communicating and rather than them looking over and going, what happened, what should I do, we'll just solve it. Get ball pressure, get to the closest person and get safety back. But I, I think that's a great drill to try and incorporate D-trans because you, you've got to do it on the run, you've got to do it through communication and talk. Okay? Alright, we'll move on uh, very quickly. Um, Alright, let's take a ball, one ball out there. Our uh, line out there is going to ask for. Get it out for your ball out there. Okay. So just building um, so building up, whether it's like motion, uh, whether you're in set plays about getting to floor positions offensively. So we talk about whenever there's a baseline drive, and the thing with um, that I find with girls especially is about being athletic and being quick and going to score and doing things with pace. So we limit that you've got two dribbles to get your toes to the charge line circle. Okay, and you know, as you're dribbling, your eyes are up looking to score. But as soon as there is baseline penetration, we always want to fill the opposite corner. So you're on the run. As soon as you put the ball on the floor, you're on the sprint to the corner. Now, if you've got three point range, you're going to the three. If you've got two point range, you're going to the short corner. So you're down ready, in a stands ready. You're down, you have the outside hand. So you've got two dribbles, slide to the corner. Now, coaches, you got to be able to like let them play a little bit too, and it's part of about footwork. Do you want them to stop, make a chest pass? Can they throw it off one foot and hook it around? Can they throw it off one foot and an overhead pass? Is you got to allow the players? It's like nothing's going to be perfect in a game. You can't give them what's going to be the perfect pass because the defense may play high, may play low, take it away. So you can make whatever pass you like as long as you're going to try and hit her in the chest and in the hands, and you're going to show your hands ready to shoot it. So as soon as the shot goes up, the next person goes shoot a ring down, goes to the back of that line, pass her. As you pass it, fill out around the baseline and go. All right, ready? Play. One, two, three, kick. Good. Next person, go, go, go. Then rebound down there. Ball, 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 ball. 
Eyes up to stall. Eyes up to stall. Drive to stall. Good. Hands ready to shoot. Drive to stall. Alright, hold that. Now, when I call layup, that means this line you're going to lay it up. If I call shot, that means you have to kick out the ball. Alright, so you're going to drive you to score. You don't know whether I'm going to say shot or layup. Ready? Go. Layup. Shot. Shot. Your footwork is 
over here. I've got chips, I go back again. I'm here, I'm looking at a sheep hive, I'm just going around it here. Now, this, I want to keep my defenders in there. I don't want to turn my shoulders and turn my toes straight into defense. So I catch it here and I'll make it a little right hand hook shot. All right, so my toes are pointed to the corner. So as you drive, I'm here. Now I can rise up, I've got my inside elbow up, I can lean in and I've got a right hand hook. So toes pointed directly to the sideline. Okay, that's going to be the shot. Ready? Let's fly. Good. Right hand hook, good. Top two feet, go. The hands ready, there. So don't turn, don't turn your shoulders. Here you go, don't turn your shoulders. So coaches, what do you see? What do you see already from the people shooting the ball? What do we see? What's that? Squaring up, yeah. So, key teaching point all right there is being able to, and I go back to, we teach layups uncontested, contested with our group every day, and it's a, it's a forgotten skill being able to not have them turn their shoulders and play against bigger people and get that thrown out. All right, um, you Victorian people would know Ezzy Agbegor, one of the best shot blockers in the world. You turn into her, and that's being thrown to three quarter court. Okay, so it's a skill thing of being able to make this, oh, terrible, but make that kind of like shot where it's just like toes to the sideline, bringing it up and having that kind of thing to their repertoire. Like, it's not everything's going to be like a layup or a two-point jump shot. So being able to just finish it with uh, a right-hand hook and a left-hand hook this close to the basket. It helps with just one hand finishing, it helps with strength, it helps with wrist strength. So being able to just get that shot and shoot a hook shot. Now, you're going to drive middle. So you're starting in the block. You're driving towards the middle. Now, if I go to help on this, where do you think you're going to go now? Where's the floor space telling you to go? So I can play in there and I can play in there. Where's, where's the space before you go to where you can get away from me? So I can play you right here and there, you can go to there. Yeah, where else can you go to? Around there, yeah. So where's the closest shot can you get? So now, can I get to you if you're there? No. If you pop out there, can I get to you? No. So it's the same thing, overhead, horrible bounce pass through. All right, so you ready? So you're driving baseline, so you get to the corner of the back, and then it starts to block up. Yep, and it gets there. Ready? So I come out there, and finish. Good. Ready, next one. There. Good. 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 Around. Near here. Get around. Good. So lock pass, or bounce pass. Good. So pop the pass, the lock pass. Good. So if the hands are up, go down fast. So if the hands are up, go down fast. The hands down, go lock pass. Lock, good. Hands up, down pass. Good. Hands up, down pass. Hands down, lock. Hands down, lock. Hands up, down. Hold up. So now, now you've got to start to think about us. So if I've got the same, if I've got my hands up, I know I'm very short. If I've got my hands up, that means you've got to pass it underneath. If I've got my hands down, that means you can't make a bounce pass, you've got to throw a little long. Ready? Here you go. Hands up, bounce, good. Hands down, long, good. That's right. Bounce, good. Hands down, long, long, long. long. Your defender stays in there, I just want to wheel out 
in behind here because you're going, you're driving the sport, you're trying to get to the charge zone circle in that two dribbles. So now if you haven't been able to get that layout, so you're out here, so you've driven into here, you defend as long as like this top side right here, which way are you going to pivot to make that pass if I'm sitting here? Reverse pivot, throw it, shot. Great demonstration. You ready? That's what we're doing. So get to the bail out spot, reverse pivot, kick out. Ready? Here you go. Try and here on top side there. Go. Next head. Ready? First pivot. Good. Hard pass. Get separation on the side. Good. 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 Separation. Good.
So I go one, two. Now, if I kick it, that's one. I've got to find space anywhere over the floor to sprint back outside the three-point line. Obviously, the only space that can't get to is there because you're already there. Can you say that? Fine. So if I've kicked it, I've got to get space anyway. The floor tells me where to go. Now, you drive. Now, I can choose to either fill in behind by doing a baseline drive or I've got to get opposite where the ball can see me. You've got choices to make. If you kicked it out to there, that's two. You've got to find floor space to get out again. Yep, you sprint out again. Drive. Now, same thing. I can fill here or I can fill opposite. Kick it. Sprint, find space. Now, you're not always going to fill out to the same spot. If I drove ball here, if I drove into here, and I kicked it there, and I wanted to run out to the 45, and you drove, I'll go there. You can kick it back to me right here. You don't have to kick it to the other first all the time. Now, if I drove here, better do so. Yeah, and I could stop, I could give it back to you, or I could pitch it there. Now, if you started to drive in, and I saw that, I'd pull out to the corner. So understand, you don't have to play in that spot, in that spot, in that spot. Okay, so you drive, you kick back to the same person you got it from, or kick it opposite, but you've got to make a read from where they're driving to where the space is. <laughs> On the fifth pass, and I pull out five, that person who gets it, has got to shoot it. The other two have got to rebound the basketball and miss and put it back in. Alright, so ready? Here you go. One. One. Two. Four space. Good. Three. Line space. Good. Ah, where'd you go to? So you're going to drive to score. So you go back. So drive to score. So dribbles to score. We're on three. Four. One's a shot. Five. On the glass, rebounders, rebounders, and hold right there. So as it is, you shoot it, your job is to get back to safety. The other two rebound the ball. Next group of three. Ready? Go. Good kick. One. Sprint out. Two. Go. Sprint out. Three. Four. Five. Shoot it! Is that a family member in the crowd? No. No. This is a bad pass. Here we go. One. Two. Pass is hard. Three. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Four. Five. Good. Shoot it. Five. Good. Shoot it. Safety. Safety. Good. Finish it. Good. Next one. Here you go. One. Two. Three. Space outside the street. Four. Stop. Five. All right there. So it's the thing about like teaching them not to, you know, it depends on what age group you're teaching with. Obviously, if you're going with like younger age group, being inside the two-point range so they can shoot that and be within their shooting range. If you're dealing with others or the girls or boys who have got range, tell them to play outside the three. The more space that you can have in the drill, the better it is. Um, so that's something that I got from my Patty just to give him floor spacing and doing that. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, we do it three on zero and it looks kind of like great and it's good for teaching them floor spacing and moving off dribble penetration. How can we make that more game-like to them? Uh, we end up doing it, we do like four or five repetitions and we would put teams at either end so they get lots of reps and shots up. And then what I end up doing is going, okay, so now it's uh, give me two blue defenders, two blue defenders, so one on the ball, one on the basket. So now it's the same drill, but now it's three on two. So the same thing, and the same thing, you can put the amount of pass limits you want on it with our girls, with this, when it's three on two, you've got three or four passes to get a shot away. So your rules are, is you can only score, and you know, we're talking about WNBL, you can only score off a layup, or a kick out three. You know, if you're coaching under 12s and under 14s, it might be you can score off a kick out two or a layup. Okay, but for us, it's like three point line or layup. So if I got the ball right here straight off the bat and I could drive into here and score a layup, I would. My other option is kick out. So if you were wide open on that, you got a license to shot straight away. 
So the same thing is you can give your players the amount of limits that you've got. So yellow have got it. Yellow. You've got to score within four passes. If you haven't scored or shot the ball within the fourth pass, blues get the win. Blues, you just have to rotate. Alright, and spread to yellows. Hold up. Yellows. It's layup or three. You can only shoot a layup for a three-point shot. No, anytime during. Like if you're open, shots gonna go. Okay, ready? Go. One. Two. Oh, there. What did you notice about the drives? Sideways. So a great teaching point is we do it on zero. As I said, it looks great because all the direct angle drives. Then we start going, well, I'm driving this way to kick it out. So a good teaching point for the offense is, you're right, you got it. Drive with the defender's hips rather than drive wide. You know, and the same thing with our girls, it's a turnover if they drive wide rather than drive and try and get two feet in the paint. So for offense, the key is you're trying to get two feet inside the paint to get a layup, but also two feet inside the paint to shrink the defense so then you can kick the ball back out again. All right, now let's go blue. You got three, yellow, two on defense. So you got on the fourth pass, on the fourth pass, you've got to shot it on that layout. Ready? Go, bring it back. On, back it out. Give it two. Good, get it. Bang, go. Next group. Bring it. Having the courage on this to move on the flight of the ball whenever you got it, you've got to be like ready to shoot it. That's another thing, is like have the confidence that you get the pass, the shot's gonna go regardless. Um, let me go uh, into now. So this is send up building this up, so going from like the Spurs drill, which is the three on zero part going four on four. So like we do four on four shell for the defense, we do four on zero and then four on three with the offense. So blue is going to be four people, yellow three. So it starts like in shell drill but for offense. So now, there. So now what we do is um, we split the floor into quadrants. So you've got literally the split line is a line down the floor and across the foul line there's a line across the floor. So your thing is, you can move from the top of your quadrant to the baseline of your quadrant. You can move from the bottom of your quadrant through to the split line. That's where you can move to. You've got the split line level with the foul line, you've got the foul line line to the baseline. Now when you move, you've got to be at either the top part of your quadrant or the bottom part. So you can't be anywhere in between. Okay, so you're either the split line or you're right where you're right where foul line is, you're there or you're right to the very corner. So the same thing as Spurs drill this time now. It's the same thing. Drive two hard dribbles to score on there. Now everyone's gonna get where the ball can see it. Good. So you'd be in the top part or you could even meet. Like sometimes there's no wrong answer. So you could be bottom part, you could be top, you'd be in the corner. So now I'll there. When we kick the ball out this time, to so kick it to whoever, hold there. We've got to make an extra pass. So we've got to shorten the pass, so you need to change the quadrants. All right, so hold there. So where would you move to to make sure it's a short pass? So you've got to get to the edge of that quadrant, okay? So when we drive and kick it, there's got to be an extra pass. So no, no, just to kick it there. The drive, so yeah, you're going to find space. Now drive. Too hard, kick, kick. Yep, so pull out, drive, kick. Now hold there, we're gonna get short passes, so you're gonna change quadrants, kick. So drive, there, kick, kick, drive, short passes, kick, 
89 quadrants, kick, good. Drive. Right now, now, yeah, you're the decision makers. The next quadrant will be on So now, hold right there. So if you made that pass, to drive the score to get right into the chart mode. So if you made the pass there, you would have changed the quadrants and shortened that pass. There. All right, so now, same thing. You're going to go. So drive, kick, extra pass is one. All right, so the extra pass is one. We're going to go on the fifth extra pass, shoot it. The shooter is back in safety. The other three rebound and get inside the paint. All right, so I'll pull out one, two, three, four, five. Everything's going to be a drive, kick, and an extra pass. Ready? Go. Drive, kick, kick, good. One, good, kick, go. Drive, kick, kick. So that's other three, good. Two. Dark drive, 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 drive. Drive, kick, kick, find space, that's three. Drive, kick, kick, that's four. Drive, that's the side, kick, kick, that's five. The shot's gonna go, three on the glass. Good, so you've got to organize. Who's on the glass and who's at the top goes safety? Yellow, have a go. The girls, as big as you can. Nothing's gonna be wrong, person in the corner. Person in the corner, here you go. Go, drive, kick, kick, shorten that pass. Yeah, let's go, drive, that's one, good, drive, kick, kick. Two, good, drive, kick, kick, that's three. Drive, good, kick, kick, four, on this one we're scoring. Yeah, the next one. All right, so blue, uh, yellow, keep it. Yellow, that group of yellow, keep it. Blue, give me three defenders. Blue, three defenders, so blue now. You need to scramble. So we have got to have one person with the ball, you to scramble. Now goals. Same thing as first drill. It's layup or it's a three. But this time now, if you haven't got a shot, so say you drive and you kick it here. And they do a great job in closing you out, whoever it is. So you want a short pass, you might have the shot, so your thing is make an extra pass. If you've got that shot, you're open, you've got shot, or what else have you got? Drive or kick. Yep. So you can shoot off a layup, you can shoot off a kick out, but you might shoot off an extra pass. Okay, you've only got uh, four passes to score again. Alright, so on my four passes, you've got to have shot a layup or a kick out three. Ready? Play. Drive to score. Ah, hold there. Hold there. Where was our first drive? Where did you end up on your drive? Yep. So, go back again. Now she was playing you. Which way is the basket? Where's your less help? Where's, where's your less help? Less help. Yeah. So that's where I want to drive into there. Go. Good. One, two, three. So if you're open, the shot's gonna go. All right, Blues, you got a four against three. So if you're open, shoot it. If not, drive the score and get it off the layout. One. Three. Four. Sometimes, the sometimes the coaches of the girls, the beauty is, is it just holding it for a second and it might be off that direct drive and kick out pass, you play slow and get that extra pass and that's going to be the one that gets the shot. May not necessarily be the first kick out pass and then the later. So it's drive, kick, fight and get a shot, a teammate's going to be open and go. Alright, let's get four new yellows in. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. No, 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 
keeping good floor space and keeping spread out. So it's four against three. You spread out and get to your right part of your quadrants. You're going to get over shot blue. Last possession. You got four columns. You got three. Here you go. Two. When they get used to one, it's like that driving the score and encourage them to using one or two dribbles to going hard to the basket and trying to get layups. Because that's what you eventually want. You want to get a score at the layup, get fouled, get to the foul line, or you want to create opportunities where defense has to rotate to get kick out shots. Whether they're twos or they're threes, it doesn't matter, an open shot's an open shot. But you've got to be able to have the ability, one, to be able to handle the ball and be able to drive to score with speed and with pace, and then have the ability to be able to find open people and have good vision on that. So it's a great, for me, it's a great layup drill, it's great for passing, it's great for shooting, you can incorporate a lot of things there for your offense, and it doesn't matter whether you're system, concept based, whatever, it's about whenever someone puts the ball to the floor, what floor spots do you need to fill to get a good open shot if the defense takes that away. Um, the last thing that I'll do with the time, The last thing that we've, we've got is, um, with us, we kind of run a lot of ball screens as part of our offense, and that's part of like transition, which I won't like take you through, so that I think that's, whatever you want to do out of transition is up to you as far as like your offense goes. But we do those two drills a lot just to create space and ball movement for our players. Um, so a round of applause for the girls, thank you. Um, and I guess too is like once I said at the start to to all of you that have shown up tonight. Like it's not without your work and everyone's work that from you know club rep basketball. You are the guys that, that put in the work that we really appreciate. Like the guys and girls that come through the AIS and the Centre of Excellence and that come through to the national teams. It's without people's work that you do. Those, those kids don't get that opportunity and they don't get taught. So don't, I guess, underestimate the work that you do, the time that you put in is really appreciated. And it's also how we, I guess, uh, make the athletes through our practice sessions, how professional we are, what standards we hold, set them up you know, for their futures as well. So the more that you're planned, you're organized, the better job that you do, you end up eventually getting recognized because you produce good players for either your team, your club, for the national system, for the state system. Um, so I really do appreciate, uh, I guess I've sat in your chair a lot of the times and come to like these things just to learn and to get better and you know, you take it all in and take out of it what you can and go and trial and replicate and change things as they are because that's the great thing about it. There's, there's not one way is the right way with basketball. You can do things many different ways. Just commit to your style, commit to your system, be flexible, be planned and be organised, but also, as I said at the start, have some non-negotiables about how you want practice to be, what are some non-negotiables about practice, what are some non-negotiables about how your team wants to play in games, and just have standards set. And then that way everyone knows what the rules and guidelines are for the team because that's what, you know, in the end, that's what athletes want. They want to be guided, they want to be told, they want to be taught. Put those systems in place, everyone knows where they are within your program. Um, I'm happy, if you need to go, go. I'm happy to answer any questions about the session tonight, coaching, teams, like whatever. So um, if you want to ask in an open forum, feel free to. If you want to grab me at the end, feel free to. Um, but, you know, I know it's Sunday night, so thank you very much for coming along. And I'll just throw it open if you've got questions. If not, pretty good. Um, I'll just jump in first. Uh, obviously, a great presentation. I've got played by Gori. Uh, I think having worked with him and seeing it again tonight, everything he does is a progression. His training makes sense. It starts from uh, something very basic and then builds up. And that's something certainly I'll take away from working with him. Is every single thing we do in our training, we talked about before, you get 90 minutes, we might get two 90 minute sessions. Everything's got to make sense because you have such a short period of time. I think um, Gory really exemplified that tonight and the way he went through his stuff. So, um, 
So again, I can't thank you enough on behalf of the Working Class Association and you know, the Lord Lee, more Lord Lee Class for coming down and giving up your time. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for coming on. If anyone wants to come tomorrow, he's also running an elite camp with some of our, some of our rep kids. Uh, if anyone wants to come and help coach on the floor or anything like that, they'd be more than welcome to. Uh, just speak to me at the end. Uh, obviously, I know it's a Monday, but some people are on school holidays. And um, this is something we have to keep doing out here. We want to keep bringing some clinics and uh, some coach education out here in Melbourne's West. Hope to see you guys in the future. So, thank you for coming.